Pose 3 to 2. Study session 15. Summary. Introduction. In this course, we have attempted to introduce you to the broad themes, issues, perspectives, and sources of African poetry thought, from the pre-colonial through colonial to the post-colonial period. In this concluding lecture, we bring together some of the major highlights of all the previous lectures. Learning outcome. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to recall in summary form the main highlights of our previous discussions. Summary. We began this series of lectures on African poetry thought by first defining poetry thought in general. As earlier indicated, poetry thought refers to that body of ideas concerned with the nature of the state, its relationship with society, and related issues on the origin and essence of poetry power, legitimacy, authority, and poetry obligation. Against this general background, we then began the consideration of African poetry thought by looking at its origin prior to the incursion of external forces such as colonialism and Islam into the continent. At that point, traditional or indigenous political thoughts had its roots basically in oral sources, complemented in some societies by written evidence. In such traditional or indigenous African political thoughts, religion, the supernatural, and the community formed the core of ideas on the state, authority, power, duties, rights, the law and political economy. Following the intrusion into the continent of external forces in the wake of colonialism and Islamic penetration, however, these traditional perspectives on politics were affected in several ways. As indicated earlier on, Islam and colonialism introduced new agenda in the discussion of political issues by offering new perspective, worldview, and experiences whose effects outlived the colonial era and are still being felt in contemporary Africa. In contemporary African political thoughts, some of the issues and themes that have featured include nationalism, pan-Africanism, neocolonialism, negritude, and African personality and African socialism. Nationalist thoughts on the continent affected and at the same time reflected the consequences of colonial and Islamic intrusion. In raising the African consciousness, especially with regard to colonialism, he sought to eliminate or reduce alien influences on the continent's political process in being channeled in the post-colonial era along sub-national, ethnic, regional, racial, religious, nation-state, and continental levels. It reflects the balkanizing legacy of colonial rule and Islamic penetration in the continent. In the lectures, we also describe Pan-Africanism, another prominent theme in recent African political thoughts, as a reaction to this legacy of balkanization and as a call for a continental union of African states. We did note, however, that in spite of its having succinctly put forward the arguments for this unity, Pan-Africanism remains idea yet to be realized, thanks in part to the reluctance of African political leadership to relinquish the sovereignty of their individual countries in the overall interest of continental unity. Another theme that has addressed the consequences of colonialism is neocolonialism. African writers have been concerned with understanding a post-colonial reality in which the old colonial system of peonage countries in the post-colonial period at the economic level, in spite of the termination of colonial rule at the political level. At the cultural level, the concepts of negritude for Africans from ex-French colonies and African personality, principally for Africans from ex-British colonies, have provided a platform for fighting a perceived cultural imperialism from the West, whose ultimate aim was to deny Africans of their unique cultures. Contemporary African political thoughts is not a reaction to colonialism, however. As indicated in the lectures, for instance, African writers have attempted to argue that socialism is indigenous to Africa. They have therefore propounded an African socialism 
whose enduring characteristics is its emphasis on community, unity, and solidarity. In the final part of this lecture, we focus on the writings of some Africans, choosing case studies from the North, the West, the East, and Southern Africa. In his writings, Franz Fanon of Algeria focused on the consequence of colonial rule, the imperatives of the anti-colonial struggle, as well as economic and political realities of post-colonial Africa. The contributions of Leopold Senghor from West Africa lie more in his analysis of the proud and rich heritage of African society, a society based on a feeling of community and a sense of history. Another West African, Amical Cabral of Portuguese Guinea, now Guinea-Bissau, is remembered as an African writer who, writing the Maoist tradition, attempted to reformulate basic tenets on historical change and other widely accepted notions on national liberation in the conduct of African experience, past, present, and future. In their own writings, Julius Sinieri of East Africa and Kenneth Kounder of Southern Africa emphasize the central role of man and community in traditional Africa and therefore call for an arrangement in modern day Africa that would allow for the improvement of man in harmony with his community. Study session summary. In this lecture, we have summarized the preceding 14 lectures. End of post 3 to 2. Thank you for listening.